so good morning all and back out with RB yet again and as promised Tempest number two Tempest GT number two we've got two of these up for sale and both gone to customers Tempest one we rode a couple of days ago and this is Tempest number two and we've changed the route yet again one of the routes that I don't do very often But I wanted to do this one because this is where we did the original Tempest GT video and I've got a nice little bit of urban road so I want to put it down but I've also got a nice long bridge because a lot of people have commented is that exhaust tone standard with the Tempest GT yes it is as I said it's very brappy exhaust on this one sounds absolutely beautiful and I have a nice little bridge that is coming up known as RB's Bridge. Now we've normally got the one on the dual carriageway that I do where we do the uh, the standard photo shoot. Well, I tend to give it just a one rev bomb under the bridge so you just get an idea of the exhaust tone. But this one has a nice long bridge that I can uh, run it down and you can get an idea of that exhaust tone. So this GT comes with a standard stainless can. It's very loud for a 125. It sounds like a debaffled bike and I do love a nice long exhaust tone. That's just the short bridge. The long one is coming out. I'm going to drop a couple of red bombs under the bridge so you can hear it. But I do love going down this road to just check out exhaust tones. And there's lots of twisties on this road as well, so it comes in handy for me to check out the tyres and that. But these Tempest GTs, absolutely beautiful cafe racer look on these. As I said, on the seat position, lovely seat position, nice and upright, and the pegs are set slightly back. Right, I'm going to drop this a gear. Just get an earful of this. Red bomb. So very brappy exhaust on that and a beautiful tone to it and you definitely get heard on this and it's also handy because it's got a lot of speed bumps so I can just push these over the speed bumps as well just to check it out suspension I'd say is mid to firm on this and what I do like on suspension on the bikes is mid to firm so you can actually feel what the bike is doing I hate soft suspension and you do get the pops and bangs if you tend to uh, rev match down just getting an earful of that exhaust tone You do get the pops and bangs from this exhaust. But absolutely beautiful. They're obviously a very comfortable bike to ride. I'm just pulling it up, I'm going to pull it up from the low revs, third gear pulling away. Absolutely no issues pulling away from those nice low gears either. It's obviously bar position on these. They're not very high, I would say they're more sort of your drag style bars on these does get you over the front of the bike but it is very very comfortable on the wrists and the arms and obviously sitting at the standard 40 mile an hour road testing the procedures 
And I do tend to rev match when I change down through the gears. A lot of people just tend to clutch in and change down. I actually find if you rev match a bike down, save the gearbox a little bit, rather than just drop the clutch going down through the box. Obviously, that's my habit for changing down on big bikes. So you can just go down through the gears normally. I tend to rev match changing down. Obviously the mirrors on these, did comment about them last time, the mirrors on these, nice and round, but you can actually move the mirror inside so the, uh, the actual mirror holder is fixed and it's very similar to your car, you just push on the mirror to move the mirror around inside that bezel. It's a great idea, which is a lot of what a lot of the bigger bikes tend to have. Unless it's one of the older ones. The road holding on this absolutely superb. You can just throw it around the roundabouts. And as I keep saying, I never have an issue on these nylon tyres. These tyres are absolutely perfect. I never have a problem with the Lexamoto tyres that they bring out. Now, there was a comment, and I've got to bring it up because it uh, obviously tickled me a little bit and uh, I, have a f I saw one of my other videos coming from a customer that's actually said oh I had an echo yeah well it's never been running right okay since I dropped it that would be the answer then <clears throat> if you drop a bike and just pick it up and carry on riding it because you're going to find any bike that gets dropped depending on obviously how hard it gets knocked if you've just sort of pulled up and the bike's gone over then get it checked over I'd still get it checked over now obviously if you've dropped that bike at speed whether it's 10 mile an hour 15 20 30 40 or even 60 mile an hour if you drop a bike get it into your dealer or your garage to get it checked out because that is going to cause the impact damage your bike goes over you've got loads and loads of sensitive electronics under a bike you've got a battery under there you're going to move all the oil around the engine in the wrong place if tanks going to slosh everywhere get your bike checked out and probably the reason being that your bike's not running after you've dropped it, you could have dislodged a wire, you could have dislodged something on the ECU, it could be absolutely anything. So if you drop a bike, get it checked out. Don't just, oh my bike's crap. It's never run right since I dropped it. Well it ain't going to run right since you dropped it. Now a lot of the older bikes had a thing called a tilt sensor. And I can tell you this from previous experience, on my CBR. I actually stitched mine two years ago into the side of a van just down here um, and it wasn't a very high speed impact I managed to hit the brakes but I still hit the guy doing about 25 mile an hour. Dropped the bike it went over we picked it up and uh, I managed to save most of it but obviously we damaged the panels we smashed the radiator coolant got it all rebuilt, new radiator in it and this is obviously where I've just had the prank and I've just come off of here accelerated up and the van had pulled out of there from the right while he was on his mobile phone and absolutely no way at 25 mile an hour you are going to stop a bike when he pulls out, I was here when he pulled out so I had less than 50 yards to stop and obviously when my bike went over picked it up got it back to the garage oh god yeah panel damage and the bent rad okay let's get it uh, sorted out we went to fire it up it would not fire and uh, obviously boss of the garage Phil got into it and he said your tilt sensor's gone little button you have to push the tilt sensor in the bike fired up but it was missing and firing all over the place did not want to run would not rev 
and that had actually dislodged all the wires in the fuse box. That was a case of like, oh yeah, that one's come out, that plug's come out, oh, you've shattered a plug down there, one electrical plug. So any bike that's been dropped or knocked, get it checked out because you are going to do some damage to the electrics. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be electrical or it's going to be engine. The odd one time, you'll pick it up and it'll run straight away, but are you going to have problems down the future? So I'd always say to that customer, if you've had your bike dropped, mate, get it checked out. And that is why you're going to have a problem with your bike. Don't just go blaming the bike. And as I said, 90% of all bike problems are normally human error. Either you're not running them incorrectly, you're not riding them correctly, or you're not maintaining them correctly. The bike is normally good to go unless it's got a little quirky fault. And obviously quirky faults are sorted out under warranty. Nice little 900 tracer there. So it's good to see all the bikers out this morning. And obviously while we wait for the traffic to change, just get an earful of that brap. It is a very, very brappy bike on this one. So we're going to have a quick run down the dual carriageway. We are five miles in on the ride test at the moment. A couple more miles to add on and then the second ride test to come up. Obviously, uh, with Lex Modo, we've had two bikes unveiled at the moment. So the new LXR is out. That video is up on my channel with about 4,500 views at the moment. The Aura, we are expecting that in the next week, so I can get out and we're going to be test riding the new Aura Euro 5. Now, the Aura, when it first came out, have a look at my old Aura video. I absolutely love that bike. Keyless ignition, a bit quirky. A lot of people don't like the keyless ignition, but you're going to get them on the, uh, on the Forzas. Even the big Kawasaki GTRs have all got this keyless ignition now, all the BMWs have. So it's, you know, you either like it or don't, don't like it, or love it. A bit like Marmite. I don't mind keyless ignition, and a lot of the Harleys have got the uh, keyless ignition as well. So obviously get them checked out. But they have got another scooter coming. Now, the unveil on that is going to be the 12th of this month. So, not long to wait, guys. A few more days. And I think that's coming up Monday. But that is another new scooter. Coming from Lex Moto, and that is all I'm going to say on that. I have seen the photos. I have seen the video. And yet again, I am impressed with that new scooter. So, we're going to be getting one of those in can't even mention what the name of it is but uh, you will recognize it when it comes out and you'll go ah I remember that scooter slightly redesigned and it does look very very nice but that is all I'm going to say on that subject and then obviously we've got all the Euro 5 models all due to come out and uh, hit in the beginning of May to the middle of May and we are still awaiting loads of bikes. I'm waiting on ZSBs, Michigan, ZSXF, ZSXRs. Waiting on all the scooters as well. So, Titan. We're still awaiting shed loads of Titans. Now, that Titan is probably one of the best selling scooters that Lex Moto have done. Nice and cheap at $14.90. I don't know what the Euro 5 model is going to be. Is it going to have a price hike? Is it going to have slightly redesigned uh, bits to it? But we've got to wait on Euro 5 because obviously everything has changed. So we'll see what happens with that one. But so far, this little Tempest GT behaving itself, being good as it always normally is. And we're also getting a lot of inquiries. The final thing to say is obviously we have taken so far this week 44 inquiries my phone has been going absolutely mental i've not had a lot of time to get out and ride test because i've <laughs> been on the phone constantly at the garage have you got this coming have you got that coming yet yeah, may beginning of may to the middle of may is when all the bikes are going to be starting arriving obviously we're locked down we've had to wait and then obviously with that stupid container ship that got stuck in the Suez canal that held everything up as well 
everything comes down the Suez Canal. So that's put us back about a week and a half waiting for the containers but I've been told the containers are now here and they are unloading at Lexmoto so it won't be long until the new bikes are here. Happy days. But obviously a lot of people are saying when they call in oh how long is it going to take you to prep a bike? Two weeks. So we're currently working at the moment 14 to 18 days to prep a bike up simple fact is that all the ones in our showroom are all being prepped and ready to go. I've started to sell the electrics as well, so the cypher's gone out to its owner. Got a couple of inquiries on the Impulse, a couple of inquiries on the Yadier G5, so a lot of people are getting into these electric scooters now. And obviously the cypher and the Impulse can be unrestricted 45 mile an hour. So if you have to be 16, I didn't say that, but you can unrestrict them and get a little bit more than your normal 30 mile an hour, but don't let PC plod catch you because you're meant to be doing 30. But a lot of people are saying, oh, my dealer has told me he can do me a bike same day. Or he can do it in a couple of days. If they can do it in a couple of days, and obviously that bike has been pre-prepped, and it's been already road tested and got ready, then yeah, that's fine. But if they're doing a bike straight out of a crate, You're going to take it. It's going to take a couple of hours to build it. Then you've got to prep it. You've got to PDI it. You've got to bolt check it. You've got to ride test it, and then obviously register it, get it ready for the road, final QCs, etc. You are not going to do that in three days unless they've got a huge army of mechanics. But then obviously, when we start talking to customers, how many miles did you get on your bike when you picked it up? Oh, it had none on it, or it had two on it. You are not going to check an engine out and make sure that is running correctly with no miles on the clock or two miles on the clock. You're not going to be able to check the braking effectively. You're not going to be able to make sure that that engine is going to run for at least 20 minutes with no issues. So I would always say, if you are phoning for a bike, just ask five simple questions. Number one, how quick can you do the bike for me? Number two, what levels of checking do you do? Do you do a PDI? Do you do a quality control QC? Is it just one mechanic that is going to be looking at the bike? Or have I got two mechanics, which is what we normally do? Two separate mechanics, two different jobs, QC and a PDI. What's the ride test mileage? That's your third one. What is the ride test mileage? Are you going to put more than two miles on the bike? You need at least a minimum, I would say, of 10 miles on every bike to check that that is working effectively. Hence why we put about 20k on every bike, which is about 12 and a half, 13 miles, just to check that it's all working correctly. Number four. What are you going to give me when I pick my bike up? You should be getting a black Lexmodo folder, at least eight sheets of paper in there. Your registration from DVLA to tell you the bike's been registered and taxed. And they should be taking you out and giving you a handover. And then the final question, when I pick the bike up, what do I need? What are you going to do when you hand the bike over? Now we take about 30 minutes to do a handover on every bike. So we take the customer around the bike, we give them a 90 point check sheet, that the customer has to tick off. So I'll go around the bike, right, this is the indicators. Check the left-hand indicator, check the right-hand indicator. Brake lights, front brake, rear brake. Clutch, is the clutch bike in about an inch out from the bar? Does the horn work? Do the lights work? Has it got a main beam, dip beam? Has it got a pass light? Side stand working, all the pegs on it. Check the tyre pressures. And we walk them around, check this bolt, check this bolt, check this bolt. That takes about half an hour to do. Two keys to every bike. This is your paperwork, this is your registration. Check the registration document against the frame number and the reg of the bike. I have seen that happen a few times, where people have registered a bike, and they've got three or four in, and they've registered the wrong frame number to that bike, and you're sitting on a bike that has not been registered. If PC Plod happens to pull you, oh, that's the reg of the bike, yep. 
and it looks at the chassis number and the chassis number is totally different you are illegal just to make sure you've got the correct chassis number that's been done with a few dealers they obviously have had three or four of the same bike and they pulled the bike out and registered it and an incorrect frame number so make sure you've got the right frame number right registration number on that bike and then finally here's your keys and then what they should be telling you as well to your warranty maintain your servicing this is how you run the bike in and talk you all through the bike so it takes about half an hour to do a handover but better than that then you turn up here's your keys there's your bike that's your paperwork thanks very much move on next bike let's sell another one but that is what we do so a little bit finicky about what we do but hence why we sell such a lot of bikes so we have 9.7 on the bike so round it up by the time I get back it's going to be 10 miles and then the final four to add on on the day of uh, handover I always do a quick ride on the day of handover check the bikes working effectively so anyway heading back to the garage I'm going to get my obligatory cup of coffee and a cigarette and probably get on a live stream tonight so as always keep following my page on YouTube because we do follow a lot of uh, live stream pages we'll try and get on the nets in the next couple of days do a live stream with a couple of the bike boys and I know for a fact military biker is not going to be on for the next couple of weeks because he's out touring Canada doing another one of his road trips so be well my friend ride out there safely heading back to the garage though as always hit the uh, like and subscribe button comments down the bottom please what you think of the Tempest GT I love it and finally notifications bell hit that notifications bell if you're interested in the motorcycle then down the bottom here right hand side www.eclipsemotorcyclesmk.co.uk telephone number 01908 643 603 if you're interested in the bike oh bumpy bumpies easiest way to find everything down the bottom end again down here right hand side look at that www.revbomb.co.uk social media page all the links are in there youtube facebook instagram twitter and the link to the garage and a link to my bike mover andy at move motorcycles if you want your bike moved around the country out on the Tempest GT, taking her back to the garage, she is all good, very happy, yet another perfect Lexmodo bike again, so this is number two, I'd love a few more of these in, I could sell these things, but until the next time guys, wrap, from RB, as always be well, if you're out riding, ride safe, and until the next time, it's a big goodbye from me. We'll catch you on the next one.